Good afternoon. So glad to join with us this afternoon, Wednesday, June the 17th, 2020. Wednesday afternoon. So glad to join with us this afternoon for a short devotional. Um, if you have your Bibles, you'd like to read along with us. You might want to turn to the Romans chapter 15. Romans chapter 15, and we'll read there in just a few moments. Uh, while you're finding your place, let us open with a word of prayer. Father, we bow our heads, our hearts, we say thank you. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your love and your compassion you've shown towards us. Lord, we are so unworthy. But thank you, Father, that you remain faithful, even when we do not deserve, Father, what you bless us with. Father, we're just so thankful for that. Now, Father, may our hearts be open. May we be sensitive to what you, through your spirit, might speak to us in the next few moments, Lord. We pray you would challenge our hearts, draw us close to you. Father, if there's one that don't know you, may their heart be open and they might receive the gospel. Father, maybe there's one that is weary and well-doing. May they be touched. May they be encouraged. Father, we just bless you. We thank you. We love you. We honor you. In Jesus' name we bless. Amen. So this evening, if you have your Bibles and you'd like to turn with us, turn with and read along. We're reading from uh, Romans chapter 15. Just going to read one verse. And maybe look at a thought the Lord had kind of pressed in my heart for the last couple of days. Just one word. Uh, in Romans 15, verse 13, and this is what it says. Paul, he says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that, ye, that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. I want to talk just for a few moments about hope, hope, hope. Uh, one of those definitions, and definitions that I always like to use when I talk about hope, confident expectations. Uh, when we think about hope, I want to ask you the question, how is your hope? And your hope, does it uh, bounce back after it's been hit? You know, sometimes our hope, our, our, our convictions we have, sometimes things happen in life and, and, it, and it hits us pretty hard. And how do we bounce back from that? Does it cause us to doubt when we lose hope in a situation? And you know, the day and time we're living in, there's so many situations on every hand. Uh, just uh, uh, day before yesterday, Monday, I think maybe it was, I woke up and I was, it was time to get up and I just, I just found nothing in me to get up. And you know, I know there's a reason to get up. There's a reason to continue to live in because God, the hope of glory, he's, he's on the throne. But you know, sometimes in us, as humans, sometimes our hope, it just seems like it's dashed against the rock and we just seem like we, we don't spring back, we don't come back. And sometimes the situations are just sometimes uh, are tougher than others. And, and so God knows that we all struggle with finding hope, you know, and finding, uh, uh, trying to hold on in the midst of our hope. You know, God knows that. He knows each one of our struggles and, and he, he sympathizes with us. And so, so when you're facing tests of your faith, even in the in the strongest Christian, you know what it is. Sometimes we can we can find it to be a challenge to find something to hope to hold on to to have confidence in. You know, when it seems like everything that uh, we look at or turn to, it seems to be crumbling and falling apart. You know, when you, when you need encouragement and you need refreshment for your soul, then we can turn to the scriptures. Not only when we turn to the scripture, we can turn to the Old Testament. We can turn to the New Testament and all through the word of God, it offers us hope and it offers us encouragement, you know, and sometimes we need that. And, and you know, in the day and time we live, I think every one of us as believers, we could use, use a little, little, little dose of hope and encouragement in our daily walk. You know, everyone needs to be reminded from time to time that, uh, that uh, the hope that we need to hope in God and we not only need hope in God, but we need to hope in the Lord Jesus Christ and his word, his eternal word, the Bible, it offers us hope in our daily lives from day to day. day we, can, we can go to God in prayer and we can read the word of Christ himself and, and the eternal word of God. And, and you know, all through that, what Jesus said to his disciples and what the word it says to us through the apostles and those who wrote down the precious word of God, we, we can find such hope and, and direction in that. And, and so just for a few moments, I, I want to talk about hope. Now, as as we look at this passage, let's read it again. In Romans 15, 13, it says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Now, 
First thing I want you to notice here, I want to look at the source of hope. Paul here, as he writes in, in, in his language, is a language of prayer, what he's doing here. And the prayer is addressed. Notice how he says it. He says to the God of hope, he says, may the God of hope fill you, fill you with all the joy. So as he's, this language of prayer and, he's, and the prayer has been addressed to the God of hope, he, he, is, he is so called because there can be no true, no well-founded, far-reaching hope which is not fixed on God. If your hope is fixed on anything other than the God of glory, the God of creation, the God of this universe, if your hope is fixed on your spouse, if your, your hope is fixed on your children, if your hope is fixed on your finances, if your hope is fixed on the government or, or your nationality or humanity, if your hope is fixed on something like that, I want you to understand something. It's going to fall and it's going to come short, but, but the truly the source of our hope, it is God himself. And we need to fix our hearts and our minds and our expectations, our confident expectations. We need to fix it on the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father, his eternal word, on, on his providence. You know, when I think about the providence and, and his provident rule, when I think about his, his favorable, his well-timed, his work, his what he's doing right now. You know, I know, I know a lot of people seem to think, and they look, look at society, and they look at what's going on in the world today, and they, they probably go away and they think and feel maybe. They have no hope because they feel like that God has lost control, that the world is just spinning out of control. But can I remind you today? The world may seem to be spinning out of control, but he is the God of the universe and, and he holds the world in the hollow of his hand, if you will. And, and not only that, not only on his providence rule, how he's governing, ruling everything, but also on his gracious, on his merciful purpose. God has a purpose and a plan. God has a plan. God has ordained. God has ordered the steps of us. You know, and I just glory in the fact that, that he's sovereign. He's in control. He knows me. He knows my inward, outward. He knows all there is to know about me and his gracious and his merciful purpose he has for me. And I believe the purpose that God has for you and I, I believe it is we will become in the very image of the Lord Jesus Christ. So when people see us, they would see the Lord Jesus Christ. They would see the hope of glory. Not only so much that, but also I think when we think about being fixed on God, on his, his, his promises, when, when I think about the promises all through the word of God, he said before one jot or one tittle, of his word would fail. He said, heaven and earth will pass away. So we have his eternal promises. He said this in his word. He says, I'll never leave you or forsake you. And so I'm excited today that he's always with me. I, I think it was the writer of Psalm. He said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed beg bread. You know, that just encourages my heart that I don't have to worry about tomorrow because he's already in tomorrow. He's taking care of that. And, and so then what I see here is the source of our hope. God, he suggests this. And I, I thought, I think also not only does he suggest, but he, in, he inspires hope. Not only does he inspire hope, but he justifies and he expects hope from us. He, he wants us to have a confident expectation in him. You know what? Here's the way I look at it. You know, the Lord hasn't come yet. And if you don't come today, if you don't come tomorrow, he's going to come again because he said in his word, he says, I'm going to go away and I won't leave you comforted. But I pray to Father, he'll send another comfort. And he sent the Holy Spirit. Now, now he didn't just say he was going to send the Holy Spirit, but he says, if I go away, he says this. I will come again and I will receive you unto myself. And so here's what I'm doing. I have confidence in God's eternal word that he's going away. He's preparing us a place and he's going to come again and he's going to receive, receive us unto himself. And so what he does, he not only suggests this, but he inspires hope in us. He justifies, he expects that out of us. He approves and he rewards hope. And so when I believe in his eternal word, when I believe in his promises and I walk in his promises, here's what happens. He fulfills his promises in us because we believe his word. We respond to his word. We walk in his word. We live in his word. We abide in his word. He says, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you can ask what you will and it will be done unto you. So here's what we do. He, 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 he rewards us. He approves. Not only that, he justifies and he expects us to walk in hope. And, and in all true and we're the hope uh, for ourselves and for others, it's fixed in God. It's fixed only in God. It's my hope of tomorrow 
It's not fixed in me. It's not fixed in my spouse. It's not fixed in my home. It's not fixed in my finances. It's fixed in God. If I see tomorrow, it's because he has allowed me to see it. And so now, notice you got to understand this. My hope and your hope, it should be centered in God and God alone. And so then we see the source of our hope. But then we see the power of our hope. In this passage, he talks about and relates to, notice how he says it again. So, so he says, now, now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believe him that ye may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And so then here's where we see the power of the hope. It's the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is represented as the agent by which, by those who hope, and in, in, in not only hope, but have experiences, and, and in their experiences, they enjoy that life. You know, I enjoy being a Christian. I am so glad he delivered me from the power and the penalty of sin. And you know what? I enjoy that. I enjoy walking in him, living day by day with the confident expectation that he's going to come again and he's going to receive me unto himself. Not only that, and so when the Spirit... When, when the Spirit of God, when, it's, when our spirit is downcast, and, and it's sad. And you know, sometimes that's what we get. In this flesh, we get, we get so downcast. That's where I was at just a couple of days ago. I was laying in the bed, and I'm, I'm thinking to myself, why even get up? Why even bother? You know, what was happening there? My spirit was sad. My spirit was downcast. But you know what? When the agent of the Holy Spirit, when it began to speak into my heart, you know, there was this prospect of gloom and darkness and, and you know when when humanity when they when they are dealing with their frailties and and their their feebleness and and their 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 brokenness you know what is the comfort of the holy spirit that it, that it, it brings us near and it's the grace of god that it unveils it's god's grace that unveils this glorious new prospect you know as i was laying in the bed just a couple of days ago and, and I, I just allowed myself to go into a bad place and you know as christians sometimes that's exactly what we do we we have a tendency to look at the world and look at the situations around us and all of a sudden we find ourselves going in the dark dark places. And you know, that's where I was at in a moment of gloom. But then what happened is the Holy Spirit began to move and the Holy Spirit began to deal in my heart and work in me. What it done, it gave me a glorious prospect because it caused me to rise up out of the bed and start looking forward to the rest of the day. You know, sometimes we can get up and we can be filled so filled with gloom and despair. And we sink so low, but then the Holy Spirit, as we read his word and we study his word and he brings through the Holy Spirit, his word back to our hearts and it livens us. He calls us to leap in our inner man and we lift our voices and we, we raise our hands and we find ourselves rejoicing all over again. Man, you know, that is nothing but the hope of God, his spirit, the Holy Spirit working inside of us, inspiring and blessing us with confidence, you know. You know, some days we get so low, we hardly have no confidence to put one foot, foot before the other. But then the Holy Spirit comes rushing in and it revives us. He rekindles a flame of fire in our hearts. And all of a sudden we have this joy, unspeakable joy, full of glory. And all, and all of a sudden we just, we're blessed with confidence. We're blessed with joy and excitement to live and walk and be able to share the gospel message with somebody that don't know him. Oh man, what a joy. What a joy it is to have the hope of God in our hearts and our lives. And so then we see that, that God, he is the source of our hope. We, we see the Holy Spirit is the power that's in our hope. But then we see the means of our hope. Now, if anyone is bidden to, to cherish hope, he will, he will reply. He's going he's gonna to say something like this. Where's the grounds upon which I may hope? You know, when, when we when we are we're bidden to, to, to take hold and cherish hope, then we begin to say, where's the grounds which I can build upon this, where I can lay my hope? Well, by what means can I arise from, from this, this uh, shedding and this, of this despair? How can I get from under all this? That's some of the things we begin to say to ourselves. And, and so I want to share with you a couple of steps that we can take to get from one of the burden uh, when we start losing our hope and we start wallowing in, in despair. Uh, first one is, is this, I believe is believing, believing in Christ as the true object of our hope. I've come to understand he is the true object of our hope. You know, sometimes we hope in things that 
that are way out or far-fetched. That, that they're not tangible and they're not able, we can't lay our hands on them. And so here's what we need to do. We need to lay our, put our hope in Christ because Christ has promised us in his word. He says, I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. He has never done that. He said he was going to go away and prepare us a place and he'd come again. He, he's going to do that. We know he's going to, and we know in our depths of our heart and our inner man, we know that he's going to come again. And he's going to receive us. And so as we turn to his word, the words he spoke, the words he shared with our hearts, we have the assurance that Christ, he is our hope. He is the hope of glory. In him, we trust. In him, we live. We have our beings. But then also, there's a second thing here, a second step that I think is very logical when we look at this. Not only is believing in Christ, but also joy. The emotions produced by believing, a believing in the blessings of the gospel. Here's what I've come to understand. The Bible teaches us, if we believe in our hearts, what is it we believe? We believe that the Lord Jesus Christ was born of the Virgin Mary. He lived amongst us somewhere in 33 years. He died on the cross paying for yours and my sin. And so the Bible will teach us if we'll believe in our hearts, the Lord Jesus, and shall confess it with our mouths, the Bible says, thou shall be saved. And so when we are blessed with the gospel message, the believing of the gospel message, joy, I mean, it arises in our hearts. And here's what happens. It's a joy that is unspeakable and full of glory. I can't even express. I can't even describe. I can't even tell you the joy, the wonder of having Christ as hope and Lord and Savior in my life. I can't even express that. I don't know that there's any words to, to, to just express his joy that he gives us. It's just a joy. It's, it's joy unspeakable, the scripture says. Unspeakable and full of glory, full of grace, full of, full of rightness. But then there's a third thing. Not only is believing in Christ, and a joy that just bubbles over over the gospel. And that's what happened when we believed the gospel. He just flooded our hearts. But then there's peace. Another of the fruit of the Spirit. The, that, and then it grows from the root of, of our Christian faith. When we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And, and we begin to read the Word of God. And we begin to believe the Word of God. What we find ourselves is we find ourselves walking in peace. Peace with God. We have the peace of God that, that we can't explain the peace of God. He just There's just a rest. That, that's a good way of explaining it, just resting in him. We find ourselves, I remember a movie that was played some years ago, The Lion King. And y'all remember, there, there was a, a word in there they used, Akuma Matata, no worries. We're at rest, we're at peace. You know, today, I think we as Christians, we as the saints of God, we can say that, Akuma Matala, because there is no worries. We are resting in the peace and in the presence and the power of an almighty God. I mean, because that is the very root of our Christian faith, and it brings great peace to our hearts. And see, that's what he does. He brings peace. When we receive him as Lord and Savior, and his, his blood is applied to us, there's such great peace that comes along with that. And we as Christians, we're experiencing that daily. You know... A destitute mind is a mind unlikely of hope. It is unlikely to have any hope. And so, you know, today there's a lot of people, their minds are destitute. And the reason their minds are destitute is because they have fixed their minds on many other things. You know, they fixed their, their minds on their 401ks. They fixed their minds on the next president. They fixed their mind on many things, you know, fixed their mind on their children, their wife, their husbands. You know, we can fix our minds on many things. You know what? It will leave us destitute. It will leave us lacking. What it leaves us lacking is leaving us lacking in hope. But you know, I've not fixed my mind on those things, but my mind is fixed on Christ. He is my hope of glory. But also tranquility in the presence, it's related to our hopefulness as to the future. See, when I look to the future, here's what I see. Christ has gone away. While they were there on that on the Mount of Olives and Christ was taken away, he was ascended. He ascended up to the heavens. There were some men stood by and said, Why stand you here gazing? The same man, the same way you see him going up, he's going to come again. And you know, it, ought, it will pay us to start looking to the eastern sky. 
because I believe the Lord is soon to come and he's going to stop midair somewhere and the saints of God, we're going to rise. And so, you know, when I look to the future, I have great prospect. I, my heart is filled with hope because I know the Lord is soon to come and he's going to receive us unto himself. And so that is my future, spending eternity in the presence of God. And by the way, if you have not received Christ, and you die without Christ, you know what the prospect of your future is? Eternal separation from God. Bow your heads with me as we pray. Father, we just bless you. We love you. We honor you because of who you are. Thank you, Father, because you are our hope. Thank you, Father, that our hope is in God the Father. And it's through the power of the Holy Spirit and Lord, we rest today. We rest because who we are in you. We are your sons and we are your daughters. And we just bless you today, Father. If there's one that don't know you, may you speak to their heart. May you draw them to yourself, Father. Cause them, Father, to acknowledge their sins and fall out from the wages of sin and receive you as Lord and Savior. Father, maybe there's one that is struggling in their walk, struggling in their faith. Lord, they're struggling in their hope. Lord, because their hope, their, their lives have been dashed against the stone. Father, rekindle a fire. Allow the Holy Spirit to do a work in them. We love you. We bless you. We honor you, Father. Now, Father, may you continue to bless, keep us, strengthen us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you so much for joining with us this afternoon as we spoke on hope. I trust that your hope is in God the Father, Christ Jesus the Son, and the living Word of God. God bless you.